This is the daily video update for Thursday, May 20th, 2021. For the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, I'm the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. This Tuesday, the Lincoln-Lancaster County Health Department announced that we are now in the green area on the COVID-19 risk dial. This is really exciting news. Daily reported cases in Lincoln and Lancaster County have dropped dramatically in the last three weeks. Test positivity rate here is under 3%, and the vaccination campaign is going very well in Lincoln. This is a testament both to the leadership of the city, but also to all of you who have worked for a year or more to help get this virus under control, from wearing masks to social distancing to getting your vaccinations. Those actions have not come without cost, but they have brought us to this point. Effective tomorrow, Lincoln is ending its directive, directed health measure and moving rapidly to the next phase of our community life. So what does that mean for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln? Effective immediately, we are moving to 50% capacity in our building, including Sunday morning worship and rentals. We will move to full capacity in our building, effective on June 1st. That means that June 6th will be our first Sunday morning worship service without a capacity limit. For June and the summer months, we'll stay at a single service on Sunday morning. The start of our congregational year in September will be an opportunity to consider returning to two services. Now, there are obviously details beyond that that will take longer than a single video to work through. But I want to highlight a few areas of our communal life at this time, starting with Sunday morning worship. At this point, we will continue to require everyone to wear masks while in our building or on our property. Now, this deserves a little unpacking. The CDC suggested last week that folks who have received vaccines can safely go unmasked in many situations. What is important to say, though, is that the, the CDC's guidance is for vaccinated individuals. And at the church, our focus must be on the community as a whole. Now, we know that our community includes children who are not able to get vaccinated yet, folks in vulnerable populations that need to continue wearing masks for now, and adults who simply have not been vaccinated yet. We made the decision early on in this process that we would not require proof of vaccination for anyone attending church on a Sunday morning. Because of that, and because a fundamental piece of our faith is care for the most vulnerable among us, we will continue to require masks while on the property at 6300 A Street. For similar reasons, we are not going to be serving coffee just yet. Coffee Hour will continue to follow the church service on Sunday morning with an option to participate on Zoom and an option to gather in the gallery or pat and patio to chat in person, but we will not actually be serving food or drink at that event. Effective June 1st, we will no longer have a cap on attendance for events at 6300 A Street, including worship. So if you decide at 9.30 on a Sunday morning that you want to gather at the church, you will be welcome with open arms. And we are still going to ask that you register on our congregational database realm as attending. That's for a couple reasons. It will give us a broad sense of how many people to expect. But most importantly, it will allow us to contact you and assist the health department if we have a positive COVID test in the congregation and we need to notify and contact trace. Music, particularly congregational singing, is one of the most important questions right now. We know after a year of study that COVID-19 is transmitted by exposure to infectious respiratory fluid, inhalation of air carrying very small drop, very fine droplets and aerosol particles is how the CDC frames it. It may then be some time before we sing together full voice as a congregation. I'm working with our music staff and volunteers to think through what our steps are to lower our risk from here. We're from small groups singing to guest musicians to humming behind masks. 
This is one of those areas where we'll ask for some patience. Expect for more, expect more information on this in the coming days as we do the research and figure out how to do this well. Like singing, religious education is an area of congregational life where we aren't going to return to normal just yet. As of right now, no children under the age of 12 have been vaccinated. And no children under the age of 16 have been fully vaccinated. There simply has not been enough time for a second dose of the vaccine yet. So our current plan is to have both an in-person and online option each Sunday for religious education. In gatherings at 6300 A Street and continuing Zoom Sunday school for those not ready to gather in person. However, this requires volunteers. And to be honest, right now, we do not have enough volunteers to run the program as imagined. If this is an area you've thought about volunteering in, now is the time to show up. We can only run the program that we have volunteers and support for. Lastly, we know there is a wide range of risk tolerance in this congregation. Some of you are ready to be back at 6300. 6300 A Street in every way, immediately. Others are more hesitant. So, we're going to continue live streaming our services indefinitely. If you aren't ready to come back to worship in person, that's, that is fine. Know that my wife and three-year-old are in that same category. Our path forward is not as a fully in-person church or a fully online church, but a combination of the two. We'll keep our online presence going and are doing some work this summer to expand that presence and professionalize it. Now again, this is mostly about Sunday morning and there are a lot of other pieces to put in place from rentals to committee meetings to community events. Know that your staff and lay leadership are working on it. We will continue to share details as we have them. I'll close with this. What a remarkable season this has been. As our community moves into these next steps, I'm reflecting on what we have done together, reflecting on all the times I've been in this room writing something to say to all of you. I am so proud to be a part of this community about the work of transformation grounded in love. The experience of the pandemic has been difficult, but it has also been an opportunity to live into our vision in new ways. We, you, each of you, have done that. What comes next is also an opportunity. In the aftermath of pandemic, we will ground our community in love, and we will be about the work of transformation, both for ourselves and the world around us. May it ever be so. And thank you.